if to the work. There are peer funders who have historically been engaged in the community health worker and promotorious space who are interested in staying close to this work. CHCF will identify the funders who will participate in these funder meetings. We anticipate that the funder meetings will be facilitated by the content expert and the grantee. One of the meetings may be held in Southern California, but otherwise they will either be remote or held in our Oakland office. The areas noted here are not the primary responsibility of this grantee, but would be areas where collaboration and consultation will be required. Specifically, stakeholder selection, the grant making process to support grassroots stakeholders, and close coordination with the content consultant. Please note, this is a suggested timeline. We are amenable to proposals that suggest modifications to this timeline. However, we feel that it is ideal that the stakeholder group and subgroups not be active for much longer than 12 months. The overall process should not stretch beyond 24 months. We request that all grantees submit a proposal with a $600,000 budget that is inclusive of all the key responsibilities and activities delineated in the RFP. The additional $150,000 should be for project augmentations. The core competencies are detailed here and in the RFP, facilitation, project management, and oversight and strategic communications. It is critical that the facilitator is perceived as a neutral party by the stakeholders, and it is essential that the facilitator bring an equity lens to their facilitation and that they invite diverse perspectives and viewpoints. These are the selection criteria. It is ideal that the applicant have some knowledge of the California healthcare and policy landscape we anticipate that the content expert will bring the CHW and Promotorus expertise to the table and will augment the capabilities of the grantee. We want applicants to be thoughtful about how the makeup of the project staff, consulting, and stakeholder group plan is reflective of the diversity of the community health worker and Promotora workforce in California. We do not have a set formula for what we expect this to look like, but it should me be meaningfully considered by the applicant. The selection timeline is detailed here and in the RFP. So any additional questions need to be submitted by October 16th to Melissa Schoen. We will update responses periodically until October 17th. Today's call will be focused on questions that pertain to how best to respond to the RFP. If you have questions that you think relate specifically to your organization and are not pertinent to the larger group, please email them directly to Melissa Schoen. With that, I want to thank everyone for listening. We're going to start out with some of the questions that were submitted uh, by email. And uh, please continue to enter questions in the chat box as you have them. The first question was uh, whether or not a group of independent consultants can apply. Yes, uh, absolutely, a group of consultants may apply. However, there should be one primary or lead consultant that would be contracted with CHCF um, and a very clear structure who the consultants are, defined roles and responsibilities, coordination processes, et cetera. CHCF will also consider the consultants' prior experience working together. Independent consultants who are applying together should describe previous projects that they have collaborated on. We got a number of questions about this. Um, can you elaborate on the selection of the consultant to write the report? What competencies and characteristics would that person have that are not reflected in the current RFP? There will be a separate process and RFP for the content expert, which will be finalized in early 2020. Um, and we expect that to occur in February and March of 2020. 
Some of the competencies that are ultimately identified in that RFP process will be influenced by who is selected as the lead consultant for this RFP. We want to ensure that this grantee and the content expert have complementary skill sets. The lead consultant selected through this RFP will provide input into the selection process for the content expert. If the grantee for this RFP decides that they would like to apply for the content expert role, they would not have input into the selection process due to the conflict of interest. Some of the characteristics we anticipate for the content expert include knowledge of the community health worker and promotorial landscape, including things like evidence, uh, who the players are both in California and nationally, um, and some of the considerations for training and certification. Secondly, also considered a neutral entity. We will strive to select the content experts that can demonstrate some level of neutrality. They should not be involved in the stakeholder group process, and all applicants need to clearly articulate how they will maintain neutrality in the development of the report. All the competencies will be clearly outlined in the RFP, and as previously noted, please email Lauren Bandham, whose information is in the RFP, if you're interested in receiving the RFP when released in early 2020. If we apply for the $600,000 and decide to apply for the additional 150, and the additional 150 does not meet what CHCF is looking for, does that put our original $600,000 proposal in jeopardy? Simple answer, no. Can you describe the selection process for comparing proposals that apply for the additional 150? Is that request evaluated separately or in concert with the $600,000 grant? We expect the $600,000 grant to fulfill the key program elements and core deliverables as described in sections four and five of the RFP. The additional 150, as previously stated, should add value and create additional benefits to the core activities. The $150,000 budget should be submitted as a separate budget and clearly outline the benefits of this additional funding. You can see the RFP for additional details. Given that the grantee has to support logistics, does that mean that the grantee needs to secure locations for stakeholder convenings and pay for those costs, such as meeting space and food? Yes. Is the grantee responsible for payment for participants' travel at the stakeholder convenings? No. Travel funds are not included in the $600,000 budget. However, the management and facilitation of the reimbursement process is the responsibility of the grantee and will be considered a part of their core activities. For the funders convening, does this focus solely on current funders or would a successful grantee bring additional funders into the fold? Yes, it does focus on current funders. If additional funders are brought in, it would be the responsibility of CHCF. However, the grantee may suggest additional funders, but it is not considered one of their responsibilities. We assume that there is additional funding from the con for the content expert RFP if we choose to take on that role or apply that apply rather to apply for that role. Uh, yes, absolutely. The budget is still being determined at this time and will be outlined in the RFP once released. Can you elaborate, elaborate further on the relationship of the content expert to the primary grantee? Uh, we expect that the primary grantee would be responsible for overall project management and for ensuring that timelines and project milestones are met and that processes are clearly communicated and transparent. There would need to be very close communication with the content expert uh, as with the content expert, 
um, because the primary grantee is responsible for obtaining endorsement of the report and ensuring the full engagement of stakeholders. CHCF will issue the contract, contract to the content, content expert and there will not be a contractual relationship between the primary grantee and content experts. We've responded to this question, but I'll reinforce it. Yes, you can apply for both this and the content expert RFP. One addition is that we would notify potential applicants if the incumbent grantee is going to be in that applicant pool. We would uh, let you know that when the RFP is issued. The process for the content, can you uh, elaborate on the process for the content expert selection and when the RFPs will be due? Uh, we have not yet set a due date and the process is not finalized, but it is likely to take place in February or March of 2020. Uh, can you please say a little bit more about how the stakeholder engagement group and the content expert would overlap or collaborate. Some of this will be determined based on the expertise of the grantee that is selected for this RFP, but it's anticipated that the content expert would collaborate with the grantee to plan for stakeholder and funder meetings, particularly the educational content and selection of speakers, attend stakeholder and funder meetings, and collabor collaboratively engage with stakeholders, stakeholders and the grantee to facilitate the endorsement of the report. Are there any already formed ideas about the size of the stakeholder group that were considered in coming up with the estimated funding? We did use estimates to develop the funding level. However, we ask that applicants propose a structure that they feel best fits the objectives of the RFP. From a practicality standpoint, the primary stakeholder group, not including the subgroups, should not exceed 20 people. Please say more about the meetings with funders and the expectations for the group selected for this work. At this point, the content of these meetings is to be determined. We have not included a budget for outside speakers for the funder meetings. We expect that they would be facilitated by the grantee and the content expert. Can you give some examples of what you would consider to be strong tools for project management? Uh, this means two things, technological tools and systems. The grantee should be adept at managing a project timeline, including tasks and milestones using some kind of technology, which could be Excel. Secondly, they should have systems to ensure that the responsible parties are keeping up with their assigned items in that project management tool. The timeline should be a living document uh, that is regularly updated and the involved parties should be aware of major shifts to the project timeline and should be held accountable for their tasks. Can you please clarify what is meant by a neutral facilitator? This means that the person is not perceived by members of the stakeholder group to have a vested interest in the output of the project or a bias towards the interests of a particular group of stakeholders over another group of stakeholders. So that covers the questions that we received in advance. Um, I'm going to take a couple from the chat box and again those that we don't get to, um, th those that we don't get to we will try to cover in the FAQ. Uh, a fairly simple and straightforward question, what is the maximum number of pages for each CV? Um, I do not believe in the RFP we put a maximum for the CV, but the CVs do not count towards the overall page count. Um, so you can include a full CV and it will not use up the max maximum page count. Uh, can funders serve as stakeholders as well? Uh, no, uh, it is not our intent at this point that funders serve as stakeholders. Um, it is possible that certain funders will be participating in an observing role. 
Uh, should a separate budget be provided for each activity as well as the entire budget? Uh, the detail that you should that you provide um, should be enough so that we can understand what the funds are being used for, um, so that it's clear um, that so that it's clear to us um, how the funds are allocated and what their use is. I read in the RFP that there is a content consultant who is responsible for issuing a report uh, and a detailed implementation plan. Is the content co consultant part of the content expert RFP? Yes, same, same individuals. Um, can the content expert attend meetings by WebEx? or should they be physically present for stakeholder meetings? Um, we haven't yet determined that, um, and we'll let you know in the RFP once it's issued. So there's several questions about um, who the stakeholders are, have people been identified, um, the requirements for the number and type of stakeholders. Um, so we have a, a long list of people who are potential stakeholders. We would engage um, with the grantee regarding the uh, specific makeup of that group and the process by which we would solicit those stakeholder participants. Um, we imagine that the group would be inclusive of um, people like healthcare employers, including health systems, plans, et cetera, um, community clinics, uh, community health worker and promotora advocates and training entities. Um, and other interested stakeholders such as um, academics or researchers who may be invested, but the specific makeup of the group um, and the specific people who will be invited um, has definitely not been finalized at this point. Is there a separate RFP for grassroots CHW promotoras entities for financial support per item number six in the RFP? Yes, there is uh, going to be a separate process. We do not yet know if it will be an RFP. Um, I would anticipate that it would be a process that is much simpler than the one that you all are going through um, to apply for this grant, um, but the process hasn't yet been finalized. The grantee would play a, um, a role in identifying the parameters for that process. Um, and uh, it is definitely not yet final. Um, can we apply for both the project man management RFP and the content expert RFP? Uh, I think we've answered that a couple of times, um, but yes, uh, you can. I do want to restate that um, neutrality is important, um, and so anyone who is going to apply um, for the content expert RFP um, we'll need to um, articulate how they would maintain neutrality given the fact that they would be playing a role as a facilitator and as the report writer. Um, we want to ensure that stakeholders feel um, that the table that has been set for the process is one that is equitable, uh, fair, and transparent. Um, that is one of the top priorities for us for this particular role. Uh, a few people have asked about peer certification, um, and we are not going to be engaging through this process on the behavioral health peer side of things. Um, so thank you for the question and important clarification. Um, as many of you may know, there is um, legislation, I believe, still at the governor's desk vis-a-vis -vis peers, behavioral health peers, um, and some of the considerations and processes 
um, are quite different, though um, I think many would say that they are also community health workers. Um, but those process processes will be um, kept separate. So I believe at this point we have made it through all of the questions, um, which I am extremely grateful for given our late start. Um, I really appreciate everybody's patience with our technical difficulties. Thanks so much, much to Melissa Schoen and April um, for assisting with the facilitation of the call. Again, you can find the full RFP online. We will post the slides. Um, uh, we will post the slides to our website and we will continue to take questions, um, as we said, until October 16th. Um, thank you so much, everybody, and uh, please reach out to, any, to Melissa Schoen, whose email is provided here, with any questions that you have.